Hey YouTube. So as most of you guys probably know, uh, View 8 came, around, came out uh, last year in November or December. Um, and for those who don't know, View is the Terrain Atmospheric and Planetary Generator application. Um, I've been using it since around version 5 or so. Um, so this is pretty much my first in a series of tutorials for View. Now, uh, I've actually got quite a backlog of videos to upload this week. I haven't been able to do any of them because of various problems with my internet connection. Uh, one just recently was the video response which I still haven't gotten to upload uh, because it pretty much cuts out whenever I try to upload anything. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to get it done, well all of them uploaded, at least tonight or tomorrow. Um, but anyway, um, so first off I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial how to create a planetary terrain in View 8. This feature has been around since View 7.5, but uh, Eon seems to be really determined to put it in a place where very few users are actually going to find it, unless they look up manuals, etc., which are also not very easy to find. So let's open a view here. So first off, in order to create a planetary terrain, um, you've got to create, well, your terrain and your atmosphere. So first off, we've got, to, we've got to construct a very basic terrain and sea model here. And then we've got to add in our clouds and adjust the sunlight parameters. So first off, to create the terrain, we need to make an infinite procedural terrain, which you'll find up here. Click and drag right, then release the mouse, and you'll be able to choose from a terrain model. I'm going to go with default. You're creating an infinite procedural terrain. Would you like to discard the existing ground plane? Yes, we would, because we are not going to be placing any terrains on the ground. Would you like to adjust the sea level? Now, click yes, but do bear in mind that the sea level you are now able to adjust is not what you will actually see in the shot. This is pretty much just a guide frame for when you do add your, your sea to the shot. So, as you can see here, we have a very basic representation of our land to sea here. And based on your configuration of the sea level, you'll be able to manipulate that. So sea level, if we adjust this, you will see the effect in the other windows. That looks just about right. Considering most, well, this planet anyway, is mostly water. Now, next off, because we have set our guideline for the sea, it would be ideal if we were to add in our sea plane. So click water, and you will see now that a sea object has been added, and your pre-render will update to display the sea actually in the shot. Now, um, one or two things which I'd like to point out is, if you were doing something like this outside of this tutorial, you wouldn't just uh, leave your sea and land as it is here. You would actually adjust the material of the land so that uh, it becomes a kind of a sandy color um, as the altitude decreases. Because otherwise, it can have unwanted effects on the color of the water, which is something you can see here. Um, I'm going to give you a very, very quick insight into the material editor here. So. If we just go to our default and we can edit material and you see here we've got the various materials which comprise the composite material for our land and um, we've got several settings here you can add an ecosystem which I'll explain later um, and you can change the type of material such as a simple material uh, which can be a noise a bitmap etc or volumetric material um, but at the moment we've got a mixed material so um, I'm not really going to adjust the parameters here based on altitude, but I am going to pretty much demonstrate how you can um, how you can do this. If you look under here in your influence of environment tab, um, we've got a checkbox which says distribution of materials dependent on local slope and um, altitude and orientation. By checking this box, you can adjust how altitude affects the the order the order of the materials. That this function is quite self-explanatory, so I really don't think I need to go into very much detail here. But just to be aware of this feature. So let's continue on now. 
we're going to uh, create some interesting atmospherics. So under atmosphere we will go into our atmosphere editor and under sun we can also adjust the sunlight here. We can adjust the height of the sun in its orbit and of course the particular orbit pattern that it's in. But anyway, um, that's probably not all of that relevant to what we're doing right now. Um, if we head over here into uh, clouds, you'll see we can add cloud layer to our atmosphere. So for now, we're just going to add something simple. Let's go with small cumulus. And we have various settings here such as the altitude of the cloud. We'll want to make this relatively low. 2.6 kilometers, 2.1 one kilometer some relatively low cumulus would look good perhaps two kilometers depending on the test render we could increase that that's looking reasonably good there so next off uh, we're going to adjust them the haze functions here so ground haze density we can bring that down just a bit and then we've got our ground fog density here you can just play with these settings until you find what you like maybe increase that a little bit again um, so yeah, we've got a very basic atmosphere set up here. Um, you could of course add ecosystems to your um, land mass, but that would dramatically increase render times, considering you are applying it to an entire planet, so we'll save that for a later tutorial. So now, having created our scene, we need to somehow convert this into a planet. To do this, we head into Edit, Oops, File, Options. And you'll notice here, Units and Coordinates. If we look down here, we've got an option called Spherical Scene. Check Enable Spherical Scene. Then check Use Planetary Terrains. Click OK here. And we have a new configuration here called Scene Radius. This is not really relevant at the moment because we're only creating a single planet. Click OK. And our terrain will now be reshaped into a planet although our render preview will not change. I stand corrected. It appears the camera angle has changed slightly. Okay, so now that we've got our simple planet created here, we can grab our main camera from the object selection bar and we can increase the altitude. Zoom out slightly and continue to increase. then rotate the camera and you'll see that our preview here will give you a good indication of what the planet is going to look like. Now you can see here right away that your clouds are minuscule. This is because usually a planet is going to have more than a single layer of clouds. So let's correct that right now. Add a new cloud layer and let's use some wispy stratus and we increase the size by about three times so that looks almost right and then we increase the cover slightly this is not going to look very realistic but it will give you an idea of what direction you need to be going and your altitude of course increase that slightly perhaps 8.5 kilometers, 7.1, looks all right. Like I said, you can adjust these based on how you think the preview looks. Okay, so I think that looks reasonable there. It probably doesn't look all too realistic, but you will get an idea. So next off, we'll render out a test. Okay, so here you can see the preview. I've done a couple of things. One of which is I've moved the sun slightly, and I have decreased the level of the clouds the altitude so as to appears to be a sunset or sunrise scene and you can see the detail of the planet came out very well um, it would come out a lot better if I increased the detail settings and applied more detail to the scene itself but uh, there isn't really enough time in this video to do that so as I said this was a pretty simple video on how to create a planetary terrain in view 7 thanks for watching please subscribe if you found this useful and I will see you in my next video